talk about San Diego Comic-Con and Johnny, who was there firsthand, can give us a report of San Diego from not this past weekend, but the weekend before. Right, Johnny? That's correct. Yeah. So not this past uh, weekend. The weekend prior was San Diego Comic-Con at the San Diego Convention Center. It was their second full-fledged show post-COVID. Okay. Um, it was their first show in a really long time where a lot of studios pulled out for the actor strike and the writer's strike, which that was unusual. Usually it's just a actor strike or a writer's strike. I don't think it's been 60 years since both had struck at the same time or been on strike rather, I should say. Oh, and, and, and so yeah, go go ahead, on. Johnny. No, I was going to say like, that's the reports I was hearing here. Cause I was following some of the goings on at San Diego and everything I was reading was that creators were doing awesome at this show. Was that your experience as well? Yes. So in fact, there was a lot more people walking the floor because here's the thing with San Diego, right? You have to get your tickets a year in advance typically because it's yeah. really hard to get tickets to that show. So just because of the last minute, the celebrities pull out, unless you're going to eat the cost of the ticket, which is in the hundreds, you're still going to go no matter what. So in doing so, uh, there's plenty of offsite events, things that they could have done outside the show. But normally you have this 6,500 person venue attached to the convention center, which hosts new movie trailers and new movie announcements. It's called Hall H. It's a fun, fun day of watching trailers and learning about new movie news and things like that. And that was absent this year. In turn, it allowed for a lot of people to walk the floor, look at indie creators, look at indie artists, um, experience things that they normally may have overlooked because they spent so much time camping out overnight or waiting in line or planning and strategizing to get into panels to see the big announcements and you know get a free Marvel hat or whatever the case may be. Well, not waiting in huge lines to get to these said shows. And instead of doing the huge lines, they're on the floor walking around and checking things out. Now, would you say because Hollywood was mostly not there, because I heard there were some actors and stuff there, but they were just doing like, like appearances, right? And they weren't yeah. able to talk about movies and things like that. But yeah. um, would, would you say the crowd was the same? Like, do you say the same amount of people there that you would usually see on a year that Hollywood was there. It was the a little, thing? little lighter. Okay. But more so than special edition. Okay. Yeah. Cause that was okay. I mean, I had nothing to compare it to because I never vended when it was, you know, in full glory, yeah. Yeah. but, but I, that was a pretty busy show, but it wasn't, it wasn't as busy as it could have been. It wasn't yeah. packed, yeah. There were times where I, I looked down the aisles and saw that it was really, really busy. And in times like that, it, was, it gets tough because what happens is that when you're in a flow of a mass amount of people, you don't stop to look at things. You just keep walking. Right. Because when you stop to turn to look at things, that cry, creates a bottleneck. The person behind you bumps into you. It just, you know, it prevents people from... Uh, uh, taking the time to do things. So in turn, when you don't have a ton of, ton of people walking the floor and you don't have a ton of people off site or in rooms looking at panels all day, it was like the Goldilocks amount of people to, you know, mill the floor and look at some of the stuff that was being provided and all that good stuff. So I it was that. just kind of, you know, I don't expect it to be as, the same next year because I'm assuming people will be back and the, you know, the panels will be back and all that stuff. But for a year where there was a little less, it proved that the studios don't have a grip on San Diego comic-con. You know what I mean? They don't, um, they don't, um, they don't dictate if the show's going to be good or not. Gotcha. You know I, I mean? like that. Yeah, I like that. Exactly. You know, you hear all this doom and gloom about comics I love hear I loved hearing that the comics were the stars of the show, you know. And yep. I love that, you know. And there were um, some some announcements that were you know stuck through the radar here and there, but the celebrities just couldn't be there to promote it. So that was the difference with that. And yeah, no, I'm kind of glad. 
yeah. And as far as financially, um, I did as well as I've done pre COVID. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. That's going to be my next question because yeah, financially I saw I did a lot very of reports well. from people saying it was their best show ever there. Yep. And would you say it's damn near close to one of your best shows or not my best, but like number two for sure. So for really? perspective, okay. I brought 20 bags of coffee sold out, brought okay. 24 bottles of hot sauce, sold that out. Oh, and wow. uh, I brought about for the, you know, I of all the comics I brought several copies of surrounded by death, several copies of Sartana, several copies of Cthulhu is hard to spell. I sold about 70% of my comic inventory that I brought with me. Wow. dude! So there was a lot of people. You had a light, you know, prints. You had a I light sold a good amount of prints too, of that. My San Diego comic-con print of the surrounded by death cover. I did or that. Oh, wow. I should say that Chris mad did for me. Dude, that's awesome. And so yeah, you had like a light sense. suitcase going back. That's great. I, I you know. put it this way. I went with three suitcases. I came home with two suitcases with one inside the other. <laughs> I love that's it, how dude. awesome it was. Dude, that's great. Great <laughs> job, man. That's fantastic. Yep. Now, yep. did you set um, inventory aside? Because I knew you went, you scrolled right into uh, Terrificon the second you got back. So did yep. you... Did you have enough inventory for both shows? I So I had to re-up everything before I did. Okay. So that was my big key thing like early July was I have to buy for two shows. Okay. So I bought 40 bags of coffee. I, you know, had like, I have like 70 bottles of hot sauce. So I literally split my inventory down the middle, brought everything together. I was actually able to use my Wham stand for the first time. Oh, I nice. Really nice. I forgot you got one. Yeah. That. yeah which was nice because then I was able to put the surrounded by death emblem on there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, surrounded by death sold out. I could put something, you know, my, my name logo on there and it was good to go. So, um, Beautiful. yeah, I was really excited to have to use that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I planned ahead accordingly and split my inventory in half. And awesome. cause now mind you, I can only bring up to 50 pounds in each suitcase. Yeah. So, so you had to make that. Work. I had to make do. So I, I planned accordingly in that way. So, I think I brought about 25 of each single individualized issue. Okay. Um, except for Cthulhu, which I brought about 10 copies and okay. cause it's hardcover and it's thicker. It's heavier. Yeah. Uh, brought two or three of the great commandment Jack holders anthology. And yeah. uh, again, the hot sauces and the coffees and the prints and uh, all that went like wildfire. Dude. Awesome. That's great to hear. You like, I, I hope, you know, like I kind of, I kind of wish San Diego would do their special edition like they were doing every year, every year, but make that one just comics and then yeah. have your normal San Diego. I think that well, would they have a show called cool. WonderCon, and that's what the comic show and that's is. That's what right? that kind of is. Yeah, gotcha. exactly. So I got, I got to look at WonderCon for the future. Yeah, I know. There's so many like shows like that. I'd love to try, but that's great to hear about San Diego. Um, the other thing I saw online is that. Uh, even though they didn't have celebrities, there still was like exclusive toys, yep. things yep. like that. People that were waiting in line. There was but a pretty, be... there was a pretty violent Hello Kitty line that was happening at one point. A violent one, yeah. <laughs> but I think like, a Hello Kitty violent, I don't think of violence. Well, but... in the sense that like people were like chanting like something. I couldn't discern what they were oh, chanting, really? but they were very adamant about getting their Hello Kitty exclusives. Let's just say that wow. because so when we're sitting in our booth. We could see like the main hallway, the main hall line, and there was like people forming and like security would have to come tell people to disperse that there wasn't any lineups happening for this at the moment that when it drops, it's first come first serve, but there's no line. So what would happen is there was a line forming, people would disperse, they'd come around, they'd look at other people in the area, and when the clock hit the right time, wham back into a line again you know <laughs> and it just got unruly at times not yeah, in a bad people, way like, not yeah. in a, and I, I say violent but i'm really just like it was just hectic that's a yeah. more accurate term yeah. i say violent because violent and hello kitty, kitty is very funny together yeah very funny <laughs> it's like the dichotomy yeah, yeah definitely right. <laughs> that's great <laughs> well that so Overall, I would say this one you'd probably give like an A plus, huh? For A plus like, for sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, for the amount of books you moved, all the stuff you moved, you, actually, you know. Yep, exactly. And that's just gonna create more fans for you for future years. You know? Hopefully. <laughs> you know, people so are asking awesome. about issue three of surrounded by death. So awesome, dude. That's a good sign. 
fantastic man i love it that's great 